Photoshop 2020 has a lot of exciting new features, but some of them are just a single click and they can do amazing things. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna show you some of these unsung heroes. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe. And today we're gonna have a look at some of the one click wonders inside of Photoshop 2020. So we'll do a quick kind of composite. It's not really about the art. What it's about is these cool little tips. So let's just jump straight in. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine a couple of pictures. I'm just gonna take this picture here, drag it into the other one and just release it. And we'll just put it somewhere in the middle. So the first one we're gonna look at is if we go under the properties panel. Properties panel is really amazing in Photoshop 2020 because it has so many cool hidden features. One of these is remove background. So if I click here on the layer, boom, the background's removed in one click. And then of course I could just kind of touch it up. Now, if you didn't want to remove the background, let me just undo that. We could just simply choose select subject and this would just load a selection instead. All right, and let's just go over the toolbar, grab our object selection tool and I'm gonna change this to lasso. Hold down the shift key and let's make sure we get her ponytail as well. I'd like to include that in the picture. And also this one, the other modify key is the alt or the option key. If we click that, we can take away this hole. Great. And all we wanna do now is just click on the layer mask to create a mask and we've cut that out. Now, of course, you know, we could go up into select mask and do a better job. That's a whole different tutorial. So I'll just throw in a quick tip on how to quickly clean up these edges. We can do it with the layer mask, just choose filter blur. Just give it a little bit of a Gaussian blur. Let's just give it like, I don't know, give it two or three pixels. Let's give it, let's give it two, maybe even three. Let's go all the way up to three pixels. Click okay. Now all we need to do with that mask is just choke it. Control L or Command L for levels. Pop that open and we want to get rid of this black area. All we do is just pull in there. Notice how it just goes away. Same with the midtones. Click OK and that fringing is now gone. All right, let's look at something else. Let's create a brush and I'm just going to make a selection around these using just our regular tool. And if I want to save this, in fact, you know what? I'm going to grab this one. I like this here. I'm just going to make a selection around there and then just choose edit. Define brush preset. Click OK, now we've got a brush and there it is. Okay, so let's go back to our picture and let's create a new layer. Set this brush to white and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. I'm just gonna hit the left key, left bracket key, make it smaller and all I need to do now is just click once and now I've got this splash right in there. So let me just hold down the shift key. We're gonna select that. We're gonna move these over to the side there closer to that window. And what if we want to put a splash on the window? Well, let's create a new layer and grab that brush again. And another cool trick is we can actually just use the arrow keys to rotate our brushes now. And if we hold down the shift key, we can move them quicker. And I can actually go and add a second splash right up there against that window if I wanted. All right, so let's just make this a little bit bigger now and put the splash behind her like that. Let's rotate it all the way around. And I'll hold down the shift key to make this quicker. Let's put a splash on the other side. All right, so let's drag these splashes underneath our subject. Well, actually just do the bottom one. Let's drag it underneath our subject. And if you wanna make it thicker, just hit Control J and that'll just double it up a little bit. And let me just merge those together. Okay, so here's another thing that you can do with these is if I hold down the tilde key, the brush instead of painting will take away. So I can actually go in here and watch this area here. As I go in there, see what it's doing is it's actually subtracting, giving us a little bit more of a random kind of a splashing effect right there with the brush. And if I was just to darken down the background so you can see what's going on, See what we're able to do very quickly there. So we've got all these other documents open. So generally speaking, whenever you work in a composite, you open these and then you start working. And then when you're done, you can go through it and you can close them. 
So another option we have is if we right click on here, we can choose to close others. And in closing others, it closes out all the windows except for the one we're working on. All right, let's look at another one. If I select all of these layers here, and why don't I just put them together? I'm just gonna put these into a smart object. So just right click, convert to smart object. And then I can just kind of move these around. What if I wanna make this bigger? So if I hit Control T or Command T, I can make this bigger. Now here's the thing, notice how this transforms uniformly. This was changed in 2019 and it's a big deal for some people. If I hold down shift key, now I can non-uniform scale it. But people don't like that. Some people want to just kind of change it. So what we can do is see this chain link up here. When we're in free transform, if we go and turn that chain link off, now it's non-constrained and we hold shift to constrain it just like it always did. So let's make it a little bit bigger. And let's have a look at how to change this permanently. If we go up under our preferences, go under, inter go under general, you'll see an option that says use legacy free transform. Turn that on and now everything is gonna be the way you would expect it. Control T, non-scaled, shift key scales it. So now it goes back to that behavior, just how it was before. Okay, so if I wanted to change maybe one of these water splashes, maybe I wanted to just kind of transform it a little bit. I'm inside a smart object, so I'd have to go into a different document to do that. But now if I right click, I can choose to convert to layers. And in one click, this puts everything back how it was with all the different layers in there. So that means I could go in here and I could use my warping tool, control T, right click, choose warp. And now if I wanted, I could warp out my water or kind of change the way that's splashing right now. See that, just make it different. And at any time, if I wanna put this back into a smart object, all I need to do is just select the very top here and just choose convert to smart object. And boom, we're in a smart object again and I can scale everything uniformly once again. So those are just a few little quick tips using Photoshop 2020 with some of the new things. Um, I've done a whole series of videos on Photoshop 2020 updates and new features. Check them out um, on my YouTube channel, Photoshop Cafe, and also check them out at photoshopcafe.com. So thanks for watching. Uh, which one of these was your favorites? Let me know in the comments underneath. So if you are new to this channel, and you haven't yet subscribed, consider hitting the subscribe button. And also if you've been here for a while, you've been lurking, don't be shy, hit that subscribe button and you'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. So hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload, which is usually every Tuesday. This week I'm a little bit late because I was working on my 16 inch MacBook Pro review, which is up right now. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.